Um, pitch. I got dang. I gotta resubscribe to ESPN Plus to watch this game. They're like, and Bijan Bijan Robinson. He's like, and he runs it through. Like he's like, <laughs> you know, it won't be a touchdown, but they won't say goal, but they'll just be like, score. Down. <laughs> like on the score. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we got that game at 9.30 a.m. East Coast for us guys. Uh, sorry for you, Josh Holsey. I'm sure you'll be hungover, so you're not going to wake up to well, watch. He'll be like, he's, like, he's like, I don't want to watch the fucking Falcons anyway. <laughs> That's what he'll say. Uh, then we got uh, – let's see, we've got Patriots-Cowboys. I think the Cowboys bounce back, but Dak struggles, but they're just more talented. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people haven't been talking about Gonzalez – Everybody talks about how well Jalen Carter has looked with the Eagles, which he has. He's looked every bit to what kind of what we thought he was going to be. But, like, Gonzalez apparently is having quietly, like, shut down corner type shit through three games. I mean, yeah, uh, Tyreek Hill wasn't happy playing against him. Yeah, I was going to say, he didn't really have that good of a game again. That was the one down game he has had. I mean, he scored still, but, like, I mean. And we talked about it in the picks. Game of the week, 1 o'clock window, Dolphins and Bills, CBS. Thank God I'm on the East Coast so I get this game. And if I don't, I'll go to Buffalo Wild Wings or Applebee's. I am going to be so curious if there's going to be pubs that I can um, watch after the game. Like, are they going to have football on them? Like, because I don't fucking know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I mean, I've been to London once, but, like, uh, it was very – I was only there maybe half a day because we – just went somewhere else but like i'm very curious as to so i mean they're bringing games over here i'm not gonna be able to watch because i gotta go to the airport but like am i gonna be able to watch at least some of the similar to last week can i watch some of the game and then leave like like what's gonna be on tv well hopefully it's not broncos bears Certainly, certainly the Broncos. You remember Russ had that game last year out there. I think I think it was yeah, it was last year. R- Russ played out there, so maybe they're big Broncos fans. You know, I don't know. I know that the Jaguars are going to have home field advantage because they. Play oh yeah, because they, they're, they're they're the they're team. They're the UK Jaguars. Yeah, uh, we got Ravens Browns. That's going to be another good one. Uh, with um, Jr. Good old Jr. We'll call a slobber knocker. <laughs> good physical football. Uh, I think this, with the injuries to Baltimore, I wouldn't be shocked if Cleveland pulls this one out and goes three and one. Me neither. Tough game. I wanted to stay away from it because I have fantasy implications in it too. So I obviously want Deshaun Watson to play well, but like at the same time, whew, the Ravens clearly look pretty rough. Of and look, this is no shot at Gardner Minshew. You guys lost at home to Gardner Minshew. No, hey. Jonathan, no Jonathan Taylor. Hey, 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 hey. I'd take Gardner Minshew on our roster yesterday. Me too. But, like, Michael Pittman didn't go off. It wasn't like somebody went off. I mean, you guys just lost the game. So, it's kind of like, well, even without Nick Chubb, the Browns offensively can move the football. They've got good enough play calling. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I can see the Browns winning the game. They're they're favored, by the way. They are favored. So, I mean. Steelers, Texans, old school football. I think the Steelers win the game. But running, uh, running the ball. I, I, I look for them to reestablish uh, Najee because he hasn't had a good game either all year. Vikings, Panthers. We've kind of discussed how we feel about this game and the pick, so nothing left here. Rams, Colts, AR-15 is back. Interesting Rams, if they can pull it out. Rams coming east. Wouldn't be shocked if the Colts win that game. And go to three and one, and Anthony Richardson starts making noise, even with CJ Stroud. And you start talking about, well, maybe this guy is really the rookie of the year. And maybe, maybe what you want to know what would be so nuts if they win the game and he plays well. He makes us look like he makes a lot of people look like it. The people that were down on him. Yeah. Because I'm one of them. I just. As was I. I don't know if I, I – I didn't necessarily say he'd be super bust. I just didn't expect him to throw the ball as well as he has. And so, like yeah, – like He didn't he, – he was not a great college quarterback. He just had great skills. But maybe – He's very much so, if he can play the way he keeps playing as a rookie, he very much so is kind of following the Josh Allen type trend. Like, 
maybe Billy Napier just can't coach. That could be it too, and I think that Kentucky's going to prove that in our picks. So. Uh, we got Bucks Saints. That matters a lot to us because we care about who wins that game because um, we're Falcons fans. That's the NFC South. Um, I want the Bucks to win that game. I do too because we play them sooner. And I want the Saints to stroke you know, their ego of Jameis Winston was able to beat his former team and they go three and one with the backup and can say if Derek Carr didn't get hurt, we'd be undefeated still. Like, yeah, I would rather, I, I think that the saints are more formidable overall than the bucks. I mean, I don't have to lie about it, but like, I'm with you. I, I, I would prefer to see the bucks win this game. Uh, commanders Eagles. I think the Eagles find their footing. I think they wipe the shit out of them. And I think Jalen hurts. I think Jalen hurts looks like the Jalen hurts. We expect them to look like for the first time this year. Uh, Cali, another snooze fest game. Bengals Titans. I mean, we talked about it in the picks. Um, I have no interest in watching this game. It's kind of my answer there. I don't know if you have anything else to add. Um, I'm, T. Higgins. Of course you are. He's been kind of bad. Um, he's done enough. I beat our no, parlay. Pete's about to hit a big parlay though, and so we feel really. I'm three out the way. Let me not speak too soon, but my team's got a four run lead in the bottom of the night. So, uh, Raiders Chargers battle of first coach fired. <laughs> Do you think McDaniel's gets fired? I don't think he does, but I think he should. I think it's going to be the battle of who makes the first fourth down mistake more than anything. Well, Brandon Staley, easy. Yeah. Well, he would be probably about minus 350. Who makes the most costly fourth down mistake is a better question. Yes. Yeah. Well, we know who's going to go for it more. <laughs> but if could, – could you see in a world where Josh McDaniels is, is fourth and goal on the six and – it's a uh, two ten left, and he kicks a field goal Dan Quinn style against the 49ers. And then it's like, well, I trusted the defense to come out because you know, I knew that the Chargers would maybe want to go for it on fourth down deep in their territory, and then that would set us up to win the game. Yeah. Wouldn't that be perfect football? Like perfect I don't even football. I don't even think it has to be like two minutes. I say like four or five minutes, and they just bleed the clock and he gets the ball back with four seconds left. Yeah, and expects him to hit Devontae Adams to where Daniel Carlson can attempt a 63, 67, 68 yard field goal or something, right? Like, yeah, the Jimmy G throw the pick <laughs> immediately. You know, I heard some decent Jimmy G analysis, but at the same time, uh, it's a little, it's a little biased because it came from Michael Lombardi, whose son is the OC for the Raiders. He was talking about it. He goes, you know, this system is totally different from what Jimmy has done over the last six years. Yes, he knows the system. He's he's played in it before. But in the 49er system, Kyle kind of does everything for you, and then you just run the play. Yeah. Whereas in the Patri in, in this Patriots Josh McDaniel system with the Raiders, the quarterback has to make the checks. The quarterback has to, you know, get the line set up. He has to – you know, call uh, out of a lot of plays like the quarterback does everything, and Jimmy hasn't done that. So maybe Jimmy G is struggling from the Justin Fields um, robotic because I'm thinking and I'm not just playing. I think they're just so dysfunctional as a whole. I think that there's that pressure too. It's not just coaching. I think there's just organizationally there were – I mean, you pick. I'm mean, not trying to call out your bad takes already, but like, you did pick them to win the division, and so like, there are plenty of people that had high expectations for that team. My thought was, I just haven't seen anything from them. I had and, some bad takes this offseason, and I've seen DJ Moore as a number one receiver somewhere else, and they didn't win shit. So like, not like he's Devonte Adams or something. They didn't add this skilled, this ridiculously skilled type. of player so like for me their defense it's not like their defense is fucking just good either like there was nothing for me on them I just think that 
everything is collapsing. And I think that Ryan Poles, right? Poles or Poles? We're not talking about the Bears. We're talking about the. the, said Justin Fields. No, did I say Justin Fields? No, I said Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo is struggling from the Justin Fields syndrome. Oh, of thinking not playing. Yeah, I'm not talking about the Bears. Oh, we got to that game. But no, he, no, we skipped that one. No, I don't think that there's pressure though, low key. Okay. No, uh, I don't, like, like what pressure? The Raiders, wh- where were they? Proje- I mean, no, I'm just saying pressure of the pressure of trying to run the offense. Uh, it's it's an it's not a brand new offense, but it's it, it's a style of offense that you haven't ran. So you're thinking you're thinking more than you're just playing because it's not. Uh uh uh. When they do this, I do that. I think that there's shit going on in that organization too. I mean, Chandler Jones is randomly getting put on the IR, and he's tw- like, I'm not saying I, it's not that big of a distraction, but it's just kind of like. They were going to get rung up by the Raiders – I mean, by the uh, Bills when they went to Buffalo. That was a game we kind of all saw them getting beat like that. They shockingly beat the Broncos, but that's a dumpster fire. And then they play Pittsburgh, who's just a much more physical team than them. Like, I don't know if Jimmy G's suffering from what Justin Fields is suffering from, though. Chiefs-Jets. Um, I'm surprised you didn't throw this in the picks. Jeez. So I was going to do it. Something tells me that the Jets defense is going to play well enough to where I didn't want to touch the nine and a half. Nine and a half, when you think about it, now look, they could win by exactly ten. That's a lot of fucking points to be giving a team on the road against a team that defensively at least is still really good. And the Chiefs have only shown us one week of good offense, and that was against the Dumpster Fire Bears at home. So, like, I, that's why I didn't want to touch it, Fair. honestly. But I tell you what, that would have been one of those games where you take a prop on the Jets' points if they had them at like 16 and a half to where you just take the under on them, the Jets' point. Like the Jets won't score 17 points. All right, in, the last, uh, in our last game, oh, God, that's a Sunday night game too. Jeez. I know. Flex, hey, flex scheduling, uh, they can do two of them beginning next week. Week five through ten, they get two chances to flex out games, and then, of course, you know the normal flexing how it would normally be. But yeah. they can only do two between week five and week ten. All right, so our Monday night game, one Monday night game, thank God. Seahawks-Giants. Um, I picked up the Seahawks defense in fantasy, so that lets you know how I feel about what's going to happen on Sunday, the Giants. You can bring a little bit of dramatics to our matchup, too, because – if the game is close, let's say I'm up, let's say it's like a 12 point game. It gets really interesting. But yes, I, hey, what's up with New York getting these back to back primetime games? The and New we, York market, man. The New York fans watch the bad teams. We're in week four and the shit's having twice to where they rotate it now Monday and Sunday night. I don't like that, but. <laughs> oh, by the way, fun fact about that Chiefs game. It's uh, Patrick Mahomes' first game in New York City. Really? Well, yeah, it's him on Broadway, right? Well, technically the New Jersey Turnpike or something, but, you know, who cares, right? Same thing. All right, yeah, that that's that's the Sunday. That's the Sunday slate. You want to get to some college football talk real quick before we get out of here? Let's run it down. <laughs> 